you might have made it. subject areas are covered here and 
uh, is useful for new course, new coursework and even degree programs that are coming on board. And this particular database has the highest percentage of active full text titles to total titles, and that's an important metric. It helps uh, to decrease your patrons' frustration levels so they can always get to the content that they may be seeking. Uh, again, more diverse content to support uh, your research needs. We have not only your, your uh, magazine and journal articles, but there's also access to dissertations, working papers, videos, and reports all on the ProQuest platform. I spoke a little bit about simplification. At ProQuest, we don't feel that it should be difficult to find the information. We want to make it as easy as possible for our users to to find the information they need to support their research. And just last year, we have um, gone through a simplification process that actually meant that we added more content to most, to most of our databases. And I'm just gonna show you some of the databases that were actually added to ProQuest Central last year. Uh, I talked about the newsstand becoming newsstream and giving you access to over 2,000 newspapers. Um, and also international newspapers. We've also added the library science database and a linguistics database and arts and humanities database <laughs> has been added to ProQuest Central. And you're seeing the red highlights here for all of the um, international titles or, or additional databases that have been added. So this is the total of 38 databases that you have available in ProQuest Central now. Wendell, can I ask you a question about the newspapers? Yes. Um, some of the papers, of course, are daily or weekly. How up to date are the databases? Like if they publish the paper tomorrow, how soon do I see it? Uh, we update each morning at 8 a.m. with the, you know, the news feeds and the, and the daily periodicals each morning. Oh. So there shouldn't be any lag time in, in receiving most current editions. Do we have full access to ProQuest Central now that we have all of it? Yes. Yes, I am sure that you do have access to all of this. And just to um, iterate some of the important scholarly publishers that we use for ProQuest Central, uh, Emerald, Palgrave, Macmillan, Springer, Cambridge University Press, just to name a few, Elsevier, and Biomed. Uh, central. Additionally, some more journals that, that have been added to the product, um, British Medical Journals, including um, 64 journals total, uh, also the Royal College of Nursing titles, and we have also expanded our holdings from Nature Publishing Group. It includes 58 new titles, a, a total of 115 titles. So these are key scholarly journal titles and some additional magazine and newspaper content, like the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, El Mundo, and the New Yorker. Okay, just a little bit more information about uh, ProQuest News. Um, there's over 2,000 full text news resources, as I mentioned. This includes print, online, broadcast, and wire news. It includes national, international, and local bundles. It has a significant back file, in most cases going back about 30 years in, in the back file. And it offers top titles and geographic cover, coverage. And more titles, as I said, are, are the uh, articles are updated each morning around 8 a.m. And some of the major Titles of the top 10 in the United States are also included in ProQuest Central. So the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, Chicago Tribune, Washington Post, Boston Globe, and the Wall Street Journal, all kind of giving you different perspectives from all across the, the country here. Some international titles that are uh, have been added. So there's more than 350 titles that have been added from the United Kingdom. Uh, Canadian titles, titles from the Middle East, Australia, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Another question. So these newspapers are all the English version? Yes. 
Yes, they are. Okay, and it's some exclusives and preferred agreements that we have as well. So is there uh, an option if folks want to read it in their original um, language? There is a feature in the platform that allows you to change the language. Change the language. Um, I think there's 14, I think we have 14 languages available at this time and we're adding additional ones. So yeah, a language translator is available. Okay, just to give you a little bit of idea of, of business coverage, um, uh, we have now included ABI Inform. Uh, this is our business database that was launched more than 40 years ago. The ABI Inform collection uh, uh, is the gold standard when it comes to business research. So this includes our global database, uh, trade in industry, which of course uh, provides access to trade journals and, and uh, industry-related magazines and, and publishing um, materials, published materials, and Dateline, which would be more regional information. So actually the, the global version uh, encompasses the trade and industry and the local information. And uh, the Dow Jones and Wall Street Journal, which have been rated the most Important providers for business school deans are also included here. So the Economist and the Wall Street Journal there. And additional uh, premium sources that are available for global market research. That's just looking at business. Looking at the area of health and medicine. We also have provided uh, access to books and databases and videos to support um, the health and medical field. Our goal is to educate the learner to provide foundational knowledge to help build literacy skills. Also to provide key titles and evidence-based uh, materials to support their research. And that would be through, through databases and books, of course. And we also uh, hope to provide materials that will support decision uh, making um, that the, the only point of care tool which supports the clinical workflow. And just a little bit more information on health and medical collection. There's about 1800 active scholarly publications available in the database, uh, 1200 full text impact factors, and also 1,800 uh, full text SJR rankings and 1,700 SNP rankings. Evidence based research or resources include a systematic reviews, clinical trials, over 56,000 clinical trials, and dissertations and theses are also included in this collection. And for nursing and allied uh, health database, peer reviewed journals. Also, those evidence-based resources, dissertations and theses, and additional diverse content as well. Okay. In the area of natural sciences and technology, you have four, actually that's five databases. There's a science database, a biology, telecommunications database, computing and a military database that all fall under this discipline. And some of the uh, publishers there, the impactful publishers, Elsevier, NPG, and Cambridge University Press, along with the American Meteorological Society as well. And that's just a screenshot of a few of the sources from the military database. And there's also Marine Corps coverage back to 1916. In the area of the social sciences, you have another six databases, uh, a sociology database, social sciences, political science, an education database, criminal justice, library science, and linguistics. And there will be a detailed uh, description of all of these databases on the landing page for the platform.
And as I mentioned, our simplification process, we, we've actually eliminated hundreds of databases. We had lots of databases that had you know, small users, and we found that by combining those databases, it, it ended up giving the end user more content. Uh, it's less work for the librarian. You don't have as many databases to manage. Uh, so overall, it's a benefit to, to us and to you as the end user, uh, this simplification process. And we've had, you know, over the years, lots of uh, analytics that show what our customers are using and how they use the database. So we use that information to, to redesign the platform to make it as easy to use as possible and quickly link you to the information you need to support your scholarly research. In the criminal justice area, uh, we also have a database that uh, has some scholarly literature. It aims to address the need to bridge the latest research with practice. There's over 2,500 dissertations on criminal justice topics, and these are unavailable from any other vendor. It includes sources like the United States and International Scholarly Journals, Corrections and Correctional, and Law Enforcement trade publications, reports, news, crime statistics, and even a crime blog. In the area of education, ProQuest Professional Education links you to about 1,300 titles, 11 uh, or 1,000 of those being full text, and it covers every area of education, including primary, secondary, and higher education. This also includes dissertations, professional titles, magazines and scholarly journals and some essential titles for education including education psychology review exceptional children and the harvard educational review other essential content as you find in the field of education about 18,000 dissertations on education in just the last 10 years and of course, magazines, newspapers, trade titles, and uh, chronicles of higher education, Education Week, Principal Leadership, and the Educational Supplement. This collection also includes reports, working papers, and content from the Education Department documents and publications. I know, how do you get your dissertations? We, we publish them. We have a program where ProQuest will publish dissertations, so your doctoral candidates can submit their dissertations to ProQuest for, for uh, WVU, you know, our students have to do a dissertation mm -hmm. and do all that stuff. Is there a yeah, there is. mark? to say I want it included on? Yeah, uh, there's a little qualifying process. In fact, my colleague, Sarah Palmer, who, who spoke with you, she's the person who kind of heads up the training and, and setting up the, the uh, inclusion of dissertations. So uh, you may want to speak with her. Or I'll be happy to get a little bit more information. But yes, ProQuest does uh, publish student dissertations and include them in our, in our database. That, that, yeah, yeah, that's how it is. That's the process yeah. now, Sherry. That's, that's how they submit. I mean, every student has to yes. publish on this. On ProQuest. Yes. They send them to ProQuest. Well, I knew ProQuest had them, but I didn't know if they included them for everybody to see. Yeah. If you subscribe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just summing up the value of ProQuest research, or Pro, we have so many products till I get the names a little wrong, but ProQuest Central. So 38 databases covering 175 subject areas, and these are the ones that are, are falling under business, so accounting and tax databases. And the great thing about this platform is your, your end users can set up preferences where they always go to their favorite database or their favorite collection, such as the business collection, uh, or you can cross search them. So if you, you, know, you wanna uh, search the, the research library along with ABI Inform, you can certainly set that up as your default uh, in your patron account. Yes. So say my research guide, my lib guide for sociology, I want to link to your sociology group and criminology. Can I do that? Can I have a link that goes to say 
your social science search? Yes, you can. Instead of just mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and that is done by you know creating a, 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 a my account or my research account. Okay. So that's how the patron would access it. They would have to log into their. So I, my question is, could I, you know, a good guy, a good yeah. guy, could I have a link for them where it already, but they don't have to choose. I'm just sending them to a search that's going to search, say. Actually, I don't think it's going to work with the link from a live guide because it, you know the, the person does have to be authenticated as a as a uh, you know. Well, it'll, I can, it'll okay. Authenticate. So, so that may work. Actually, that may work. I I haven't actually had the opportunity to try that, of course, okay. but that's something I'll explore with you to make sure that it works. Okay. Okay. So business and there are your database titles again for health and medicine. So the nursing ally health collection, all the way down to dissertations and full pieces, if you'd like to include those. Uh, the science and technology collection. And again, it notes that you can search these separately together or in subject clusters. The business, I may have included that one more than once. And finally, feel, feel free to take down my contact information. I can be your point of contact for, for questions or uh, demonstrations to point you towards, you know, training materials. Uh, we're moving towards a um, uh, self-train or uh, self-help type training resources. So we have lots of training videos and live guides to keep you up to date on the on the latest features. Should you have any question about the functionality or, or technical questions, you can reach out to support at ProQuest.com. And we have a different support team for our ebook collection. So that's ebook support at ProQuest.com. And we're going to look at our live guides in detail towards the end of our time together. Yeah. So any questions about any of that as I toggle over to the browser and we'll begin to explore the platform. Uh, I've already taken the liberty of, of logging into your databases through the A through Z list. And here you see direct links to our, our historical newspapers, our congressional collection, the Wall Street Journal. There's another link, of course, to the historical newspapers, abstracts for dissertations. But where I'm going is to the ProQuest databases link. And this is the landing page that allows you to access the 38 databases. And I'm going to click there to just show you that description um, for, for the databases. So you can see a brief description. And this is where you would select the databases that you want to use. Uh, of course, the default is to use all of them. But notice here that a patron or, or a professor can add a shortcut to any collection. So if I chose to deselect this and I just want to use the agriculture database and um, maybe the ebooks, then I can certainly set up a a quick link to search just those databases and it's showing me now that I'm just searching across the two databases. And I did that simply by going to the database tab and selecting to, to create a shortcut. Now, of course, your patrons need to create a, a mind research account. I'm sure that most of them have been prompted to do that, but that is what will allow them to, to hold this, this place holder and to, uh, you know, come back to this database and not have to, to do a new shortcut or create a new shortcut. So at our landing page, um, you're seeing um, one search box. Uh, you can add a keyword there, a phrase, uh, uh, you know, anything, uh, a subject heading, anything that you want to, to search across. Let me go back to all databases. Let's change this back to all. And I'm going to do a few searches and look at the results list and familiarize you with that type of content. Before doing a search, I just want to drill down and show you a little bit more of, of the subject coverage and the uh, an ability to get to the database. So I just clicked on history there and notice it gives me a description of all of the databases that fall in the history, uh, the subject history. And I'll just take the first one at the top there. I wanted to search across the American periodicals then I get to a landing page that is specific to just that database. So, and then there's, there's a better description. If you just scroll down the page, 
you'll see more information and a more thorough description of this particular database. So it's telling me that there's 89 journals, uh, about 118 periodicals included in this database. And I did have a link to show me the complete um, um, list of publications that are used for this database. So just kind of pointing those things out to you, how you can get to a very thorough description that you might use to encourage usage of, of this particular database. So back at home, uh, we'll just do a few searches here. I'm going to start off with something like Empowering Women. There is a type of head feature that suggests things that closely match what I'm uh, typing. And just one second, I'll have a results list. And what we've done in our simplification process, uh, all of our content or each article is its own landing page. So you'll be able to get to the, the citation and abstract, the full text article, if the PDF is available, it's all available on one page. So you're not navigating to all of these different pages. And I'll show you that in more detail in just one moment. Beginning with this results list, I can choose to narrow this to just full text if I want to, or just peer-reviewed articles. And I do also have information on, on what peer-reviewed or, or what stands as peer-reviewed. I can quickly modify this search. I can go back to any searches that I perform within this session, and I can save and assert, save a search and create alerts. So if you want to be alerted when new content is added, or you query, you can create an alert and tell the search engine, notify me every seven days, every 21 days, whatever period you define. Additionally, there is our smart search feature. And this has been a part of ProQuest for a long time, the ProQuest platform. We suggest subject headings that closely match your query. And this is just a way to ensure that your patrons will always get to relevant results. So looking at empowering women and education, I can click on women and women's studies, women in education, or I can choose to view the entire list of related searches. And of course, by selecting any one of these, I would pull up a new results list that I can uh, use to, to hone in on what I'm really looking for. So now we're seeing two tabs. One tab is for your uh, ProQuest Central results or your, your magazine and newspaper and, and uh, videos and dissertations. And then the other tab is simply for the ebook results. Okay. And I'm going to show you this in a moment, but it will be the existing eBrary interface. And as I've said, that interface will be changing later this month to the eBook Central interface. In the left sidebar, we find our facets that will allow us to um, define or refine the search. So, of course, the, the default to present your results is by relevance, but we can choose to return results by the oldest first or the most recent. And I'll go and sort this to pull up the most recent result. And I'll just scroll down a little further to show you other facets that I have. Um, I can look for, of course, just full text. And actually, it appeared there. So full text, I have 21,000 articles, and I have another 1,800 that provide just a citation and abstract. Uh, I also have my peer-reviewed content, which tells me a, a, a record number there. And simply by clicking there, it, of course, narrows my results list to just that content. And additional source types. So uh, I can pull back my 8,000 newspaper articles. I have more than 5,800 dissertations available. There's 3,500 entries from wire feeds and even more options. So when I select the more, it gives me the ability to define this, uh, this results list even further. So now I can choose to include or exclude any sources that, uh, that I would like to. So I'll choose to include scholarly journals, um, newspapers, dissertations and theses, and I'll just apply that. It's going to be a large results list, of course, but um, the page refreshes and I'm over 16,000 results there. 
And I'll scroll down to show you that there is a date bar that allows us to define the date range as well. So uh, showing that there's results dating back to 1980, I can just slide this bar up to the previous five, that's actually nine years, 2010 to 2019, and update that to, to narrow the results list to this date range. So there's my, my seven year date range. I can even tell the search engine that I want to find articles uh, from a particular publication. So uh, again, if I click on any one of these publications, it will show me a record count and allow me to pull the content from just those publications. The Financial Express we're seeing has 64 articles, the Hindu has 60 articles and so on. I can even refine the search by subjects. It shows me that I have more than 1,300 articles that fall under the subject for women, another 553 for empowerment, and there are even more options. So a very, very strong environment to allow you to refine the search and quickly narrow to the content that may be most beneficial to the research. I can even look at classification codes and companies and organizations that are that are indexed with the, with the article. We see that there are 62 articles that refer to the Agency for International Development, Congress, or the United Nations. All those allow me to refine the search. I can even look at locations that are mentioned within the article. So all of this information you know, is indexed into the record and allows you to, to, uh, to search or to narrow based upon these options, even persons that are mentioned in the article. So this allows me to find articles that have mentioned um, foreign and current presidents or presidential candidates or uh, by language and by database as well. So all of these facets really allow me to quickly narrow the content to a more manageable results list. So I'm just going to step back to the top. I do have the most recent uh, article available. If I can just hover over the icon of the source type, it will tell me this is a scholarly journal. And that's all we have. There's another here. So these paper, just hover there and it'll tell the, the user what's, what's uh, what the source type is. And I can quickly remove these filters as well, just, just delete them and go back to the original results list. So I'm going to click on the, the title of this article. Notice that this result gives me the, the abstract and details, the full text article, and the PDF all in this one record. Now, you can see that when I click on the landing page, the details page here. So this is Article number one, 8,700 articles. Um, you see the, the authors or contributors for each article. You can, of course, click on this to bring back all content for the particular contributor. The, the real strength of, of this is, is the, the T index. And we do index up to 25 deals for most articles. Uh, here we see the abstract for the article. And there's the translation feature. This is where you're beginning to be um, to the translation feature. So it should a menu that allows you to select language that I like to translate to. Uh, it does take a minute or two to do that. Uh, sometimes it's very quick, sometimes it's a little sluggish. Uh, this allows me to, to hide the details or, the, uh, or actually the, the um, Search terms should be highlighted there. You may have it turned off, but uh, that's what this is indicating to show by the, the uh, highlighted search terms. And not only in the abstract on this page, but I'll scroll over down, I get the full text article. And here I can turn, again, I can translate or turn on the search term navigation. And this is a pretty long article, so forgive me for just using my page down button to come all the way to the bottom of the article. I 
actually where we're going to go to the next tab for the full text PDF. That's the PDF, and we include those when the publisher provides those to us. So, um, so the plain text, the full, and the PDF. So there's your PDF. You can print that out and clean copy to to have available. And finally, here's the details that I was trying to get to. So on the details page, you do have to have that, and then your index, index fields for the article. So the subjects for this particular article, of course, we can launch a new search from this place. The authors or contributors, the publication title. This allows me to jump into that publication and to browse it by issue if I want to. Uh, number of pages. Uh, it tells me you uh, have a unique number and URL that I can use to put it back to this article. Uh, that, that document ID number is, is a great time saving feature for those of you who may work around the reference desk. You may grab those numbers to quickly want to to a document or to an article. In the advanced search page, there is a place to just plug in that, that document ID and quickly retrieve it. And the URL that you can share with those who may need your assistance quickly. Just send them the link to the article and as soon as you can authenticate them, they can get the article. So again, great for those who work at the reference desk or, or just need to assist the professor very quickly in finding some content. And this was last updated and it's telling me the database that this is from from a course. I can also uh, launch a search here. I can download this article as, as a PDF. I also have the so PDF is not available. You can still download it as a PDF. We have the uh, ability to cite and all of your uh, different citation formats. APA 6, MLA 8, and we've recently added Vancouver, I think that's new, but uh, any citation style that, that uh, you need. Additionally, when uh, users create their personal accounts, they can select the citation style that they use most often and, and, and save that. So just clicking out of that. Uh, we can email from this point, we can print the article, and we can also save the article locally. And when an article is not uh, readily available, I think you saw on the front page that you can use your link resolver to find the full text article there. Additionally, uh, here's your link to related ebooks. So any ebook content appears in the right sidebar. So we, we could have gone to that tab just for ebooks and got the results list, but yes. Is that are they which ebooks are there? Are the ones that we have? Mm -hmm. that we They're the ones that you subscribe to that are in your academic complete collection. It's about 180,000 titles okay. that you have. Uh, not counting what may be available through your DDA program. So, so the DDAs aren't going to show up in the sidebar. No, they will not. Okay. And I'm going to uh, look at that in just a moment, but uh, I'm moving on to the advanced search screen. Uh, this is where you can you know, be really specific about what you're looking for. You can add up to eight search boxes to really, really um, hone in on the content that you need. And you can tell the search engine you know, where to search, anywhere in the record, search just the abstract, full text, the title, uh, the publication, or search by subject heading. I'm just going to do a quick search here on something like China, and let's see if I select uh, subject, and notice what it does. Uh, just typing in China, it wants me to be more specific, so it's allowing me to look up subjects, specific subjects that I want um, as it relates to China. I'm going to add another search term here, but it gives me the ability to type that in again, and I'm looking for subjects that contain the word China or that begins with whatever my search term is. And I'm really just looking for the word China, and it is listed here. <coughs> but just showing you uh, how you can look up subjects and add those to your search.
Did I not select the right thing? I just think it's giving me a hundred at a time and China's pretty far back. <laughs> yeah, okay, I see how it is. Thank you. But I'll uh, just go in and, but you see how that works. I'll go in and add another search term. I'm just going to add something like economic conditions and just add that to my search. Also on the advanced search page, I can define my date range. So if I want articles within the last 12 months, I can certainly choose that. I can uh, choose to add a person to this query. So it allows me to look up every person that's indexed into to this, this are uh, these articles. So I can, again, look for persons. I can look for companies and organizations. And I can select the source type that I'd like to include in my results as well. And the, the document type, these are all of the different document types, accounting and tax standard, annual reports, back matter, business cases, commentary, all of these document types are available in ProQuest Central. And finally, languages. Someone asked about languages, we can um, include languages and tell the search engine how we would like the results to be returned. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this search and just again show you the results list here. And this, this will work just like it did for the basic search. I'm going to come back and show you that book content in just a moment, but moving on to publications. Uh, it tells us more than 2,200 publications available. We can browse through each edition of the publications uh, by just selecting them here. We can narrow by scholarly journal, by trade journal, uh, magazines, reports, and it's given us a count of all of the different publications that are available here. Working papers, audio and video, even government and official publications and pamphlets as well. And I can do a search here as well and just say that I want to find uh, publications that include the word sports medicine in the title, or the title can begin with the, the terms that you included in the search box. It can be in the publication summary or in the subject. I'm just going to go on and um, I'll show you the differences here. So I'll do it in the publication summary. And I get 31 publications there. And I can begin to drill down under each publication. And if I just change this from publication summary to in the title, and you'll see that it should now is it to eight publications in that case. And just because the Asian Journal of Sports Medicine is at the top of the page, I'll go on and uh, link out to that one to show you that you can search within just this publication after browsing to a publication. And I can also drill down under any date and find every article in the most recent edition. So I have 15 items that are included in the Asian Journal of Sports Medicine from Tehran in March of 2017. Moving on to browse. This is another way to, to just point and click your way to the content that, that uh, might help a patron or, or, um, or a professor. Uh, first of all, here's a topic guide that allows you to see the, uh, the path. You can just type in a subject term here or, or keyword. It will show you the, sub, or the path that uh, the search engine would take to get to that content. And I can also just select something like uh, accounting and tax information and drill down under accounting. And uh, really, this is just going to show me the path that I would take to get to to articles on accounting and review services, accounting uh, interpretations, policies, and so on. So it's showing me that I would start with a tax, accounting and taxation, then accounting, US standards, and then I can quickly read all documents that relate to any one of those subtopics. 
And this is all under the browse, the, the point and click way of narrowing the topic to get to, to the results list. So, any questions about any of that so far? Pretty straightforward. All right, so um, I'm going to show you a little bit of the user features or the, uh, the toolbar, and then I'll start to show uh, the ebook e content as we uh, close out our time together. So here I can go back to recent searches. And this is a cool page as well um, because it allows me to see anything that I've searched over this session. Your patrons can save this information you know, or if they're logged into my research, it automatically saves for them. So when they come back to continue their research, just go to my research account and log in and click on that previous search and it will update with the most, the most current results as well. But another really cool feature of this is that you can combine any searches, even if they have nothing to do with each other. I can say that I want to combine search number one. I think I still have to type in one and five. I think that's all I need to do. And even if they have nothing to do with each other, they, the search engine will still try to find you know, some type of uh, result or to try to tie those, uh, like that's empowering women in education and in counting. Of course, we might not find anything there, but but uh, just showing you the functionality of, of uh, that feature on the on the uh, return or uh, recent searches pages. So that's the icon in the top right corner of the toolbar. There, this is uh, where you can select any items. And I didn't select any items in a results list, but if I had, that's where they would where, where they would appear. And finally, the My Research account. Now, I've, I've already tried to create an account. It wouldn't allow me to do that uh, here on your campus, but you know, of course, I have my personal accounts. But this is where your patrons would be prompted to create their My Research account. And what a My Research account does is it allows them to save their documents. So. They can quickly get back to those documents. They can save their searches as well. You can create alerts and RSS feeds. And I, I spoke a little bit about that. When you create an alert, you tell the search engine how often you like to be notified of the alert. And the customization features that allow you to say how you want your articles to be cited. If you want to default to a certain database every time you come to ProQuest Central, or if you want to uh, set up a particular uh, favorite search strategy. If you like to default to uh, advanced searching or as a librarian, you might want to default to the command line searching or just the basic search. So all of these preferences can be set after creating a My Research account. And finally, RepWorks. Uh, and I think you all do use RepWorks, but just, you know, okay. You canceled? Okay. Okay. Uh, as of May 31st. As of May 31st, okay. But uh, yeah, that was a way to uh, link your your uh, articles and citations to the reports and to manage them in, in that program. Okay, any questions about any of that so far? Anything at all? I have a question that's, I guess, more for Megan. Um, so, I guess it's added some database and things we haven't had before, like there's a nursing and allied health one that we haven't had before. Are those going to be added to the databases page individually? Well, if you guys want, if, um, we can, on the admin side, we can create links for the subject databases and add that on there, for the specific ones in allied nursing. So whatever you guys want. Because right now, um, even for Quest Central, and even in like the nursing uh, subject, okay. people wouldn't even notice it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we have any of these ones. All right, so I've just done another quick search on something like foreign trade, but this is to, to highlight or to show you uh, uh, ebook central. Let's start to say ebook central results now instead of ebrary or, or EBL. And let's see the interface that comes up here. So 
Okay, this is our eBrary reader. And in a moment, I'm going to link it to my personal account and show you what the new reader looks like. What we've done is we've taken the best components of eBrary and EBL and combined them on this new eBook central platform to give you, you know, total user experience. You can, uh, you know, meet your end user uh, needs as well as do your acquisitions all within the new eBook central platform. Uh, platform. So now we're seeing the book jacket. We can click on this to open up and read online. So I can click on the book jacket or read online, or I can do a full download. And of course you can define in the Lib Central module, the administrator module, you can define how long you would like the, the downloads to be. They can be as short as one day, up to 21 days. So all of those types of things can be done in Lib Central. Uh, we can do just a chapter download. And that's what we find most people do. They, they're not downloading the entire book, but they're looking for answers to research questions or trying to quickly answer questions. So they're not reading the entire book, but maybe downloading just a chapter as a PDF. Uh, also, I can add to a bookshelf from this place. It's like creating your own personal library. So. Uh, the books that you find most most beneficial for for your research or just for your personal interest can be added to your personal bookshelf and you can always share the link to a book with anyone within your campus family so you know professors can share content that they want students to to read before discussion or or you know on their on their uh, class management system blackboard or whatever they may be using so that's a way to to share the the book content, and of course, I can always cite um, the, the the work as well. So, APA, Turabian, Harvard, and MLA citation uh, format. Additionally, I get uh, information about the availability of the book. Can I ask uh, a question about that? Sure. Because most of our e-libraries are single-user options. We have some that will say unlimited. That's for eBrary, but EBL is normally nonlinear, which means multi users. So when we go to just eBook Central, how will the availability look like? It's actually a little star on the page, and it'll it'll be green or red, telling you if it's if it's uh, available or not. Just. But will it still have the language about? Well, I don't know yeah, actually, and what three, then you'll find with some of ours are even three users. I mean, what will the language be for me to know that I can get on it because it'll it it'll tell you if it's available or you know if it's if it's checked out to okay. to a user. Uh, and most of the books on the new platform, you can actually view them even if it's not available. You can view them for five minutes, and then it becomes unavailable. So, and that is the way that you can either trigger a loan or a purchase through your DDA program that someone has visited or found interest in that title. And, um, you know, you'll be prompted. You can look at it very briefly, and then there's a form that pops up that will alert the librarian that it's been viewed. Well, we've been wanting to get away from that, but we can't get away from <laughs> like the five-minute rule because, oh, yeah. correct me if I'm saying this wrong, Certain publishers will not allow short-term loans, so they won't let you. You have to have it mediated requests come to me to say I'll buy or not. So it's not like you can we can purchase a short-term loan on it. So that feature then will still be in place for yes, those yes. publishers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, get back to maybe. Yeah, I'm asking Sherry the same question, but I'm going to ask it again anyway. So, I can get, um, so this one is unlimited access, so that sounds great. Um, but, and you said there's going to be a green, some sort of green flag to show that it's available. But if I'm uh, helping a professor and he'd like to have a class have access, that, so the unlimited access, that would be fine. Yes. But for these things that Sherry is saying, we've purchased single user access or three user access, 
what what am I going to see? As you a actually, it'll show. You know, this this book is checked out, or or uh, it's not checked out yet. Okay. But I don't want to send 25 students to a book that only one of them is going to be able to click into and read at a time. Yeah, but it will tell you that it is you know limited license that one user or three. Oh, you'll just say yeah. that unavailable. Yeah. Okay. Unavailable. Yes. Again, uh, this has been Sorry, set up for. Yes, yeah, sure, no problem. This, no problem. But my understanding is, once we merge EBL and eBrary, we're going to take the function of EBL and follow it more than the eBrary. So, does that mean most of our eBraries going forward are going to be nonlinear lending, so we can have multiple users? Then yeah, it does. It does. Okay. It does. Um, so that might help yeah. some that. We had the academic complete package mm -hmm. through eBray, which was unlimited. Okay. Right? It was unlimited. Yeah, that, so that is what that means. And that's what I'm showing you. Your subscription is uh, it's, it's that academic complete. That, that package that Correct. unlimited access for those books. Correct. Well, we have a lot of eBray that we purchased mm -hmm. approval wise and our DDA triggers. Our DDA triggers are not unlimited, so you're going to have. That's to where, it's, yeah, that's where you, you don't know until you click on it. Yeah. Okay. Does that answer your questions on? But yes, having that academic complete collection does give you that unlimited access to 180, 183 titles and counting. 183,000 titles is what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so from this um, details page, uh, the, we can, I'm sorry, this is not the new platform. No, this is the old but the reader, this reader is very similar to the one that's in eBook Central. So we we found this to be the better reader. So this is the one that we will be using in the new platform. So your patrons should be familiar with this. Pretty, very intuitive. So. I uh, just face any problems with it. But of course, you know, we can jump into any chapter. We can search within the book, of course, uh, and a very detailed bibliographic record as well that probably just you librarians use. And oh, do, uh, do they, speaking of bibliographic record, do they have good subject headings assigned? I see, I'm faint. Is it those that's what's on yeah. right there? Okay. Because we have some e things that don't have any subject heading assigned. Okay. Um, but these will. Yeah, these do. Evoke Central will have. Will have subject headings, yes. And you're seeing um, LC call numbers as well. Are those clickable there? No, they're not. They're not. Okay. Um, and of course, you probably know about the copying and, and printing. Um, you can. Um, uh, print approximately one third of the book, um, and the, the, the copying in, in this case, um, uh, you can copy the entire book, but um, well, this is saying 77 pages, okay? But the, the I'm not, I don't know the total number of pages in this book here, there it is 257, so you can print one third of that. Is that wasn't that just from the EBL and eBrary? I think so. Uh, I'm more familiar with with eBrary than EBL, to be honest with you. So uh, I'm not I'm not sure about the copying in that particular database. Okay, I'm gonna um, click on the search just to show you. You know, you can do a simple search. You can search um, you know by chapter and get chapter results. And I'll do a search here. But I know that you all are familiar with this, so I'm going to move on to the new platform in just a moment. But this allows us to refine the search. We can look for any or all of the subjects that we that we select, and then there's a, a ranking meter that tells us, you know, where the most relevant results fall within the chapters of. I think there's 50 books that are presented on on the results list. And the advanced search page is showing you a little bit of that where you can add up to eight additional uh, 
search boxes to you know really define the search and all of the fields that you can search the full text subject author publisher doc id and so on so in course is about that i do want to move to the to the other platform and and begin to familiarize you with that and of course i don't have anything in the bookshelf but hopefully i have a timed out here and i can quickly get to my there we are so this is the interface for the new ebook central it uh Simple, you know, one search box, you know, very much like our our uh, ProQuest Central database, and all of this information is customizable. So uh, through Lip Central, you will be able to add your your WBU logo in the top left corner here, um, and there's also a place for customization where you'll be able to put six links in the top right corner here. So if you want to link to your catalog or to uh, live guides or whatever you decide you want to link to or provide links for from from the uh, landing page here, you can certainly do that. Uh, scrolling down the page a little bit, your library will be identified. This is my personal account, so it has my name and whatever information you want to include in this in this box. So you know if you want to you know highlight the end of the school year or of uh, um, all content due back in the library on a certain day, whatever you, you want to put there. And you can quickly link to videos from this place. So these are our YouTube videos. This will be great to uh, share with, uh, you know, anyone you need to teach about. These are short videos, three minutes long or, or less. Mm -hmm. So I, maybe I didn't get it. So do you have to be go to WVU, access ebook central, but do you have to then log in to your personal account to do anything or no, you, don't you don't, okay. you don't. Just to, you know, Just for the bookshelf, for it. the bookshelf. Okay. But no, you don't have to log in. Okay, and then this uh, just kind of gives an idea of, you know, what is included in this product, uh, these, these two boxes here. And at the lower portion of the page, there's a carousel that will highlight the newest content, the newest titles that have been added, or if the student has created their personal bookshelf, it will rotate with items that they've recently visited. Okay, so it, it allows them to quickly, you know, link back into uh, a work that they have, have uh, pulled to the forefront recently. And we've left, you know, a, a lot of white space on the page. We hope, you know, we think that kind of gives a calming effect. It's not cluttered and uh, so, you know, Again, lots of analytics have gone into this design and uh, trying to make it not only visually appealing, but you know, a strong search environment as well. And I'm gonna do one or two searches here. So I'm gonna use the same search, um, nanomaterials, and just see if I can hmm, kind of so log back in. All right, so I get 5,900 books for nanomaterials. Um, I can define, refine my search, and it tells me the book the status of the book right at the top here is owned and subscribed by my library, by your library. And we can quickly narrow the results by year. We can show all years where there are results. We can narrow by subject. And I'll show a little bit more of the subject area. All of these uh, science and engineering subjects with a, a record count there by language and also by author. Can I just check with that um, status thing up the very top on the left? So is that saying that it, only, it will default to just things that are owned and subscribed to by my library? Exactly. Oh, no. Oh, so you had 6,000-something. So if you only want to see what's subscribed to, 
you have to click that box. Yes. Okay. Yeah, especially when, um, I think that's going to be kind of key when you start dealing with your policy holdings and uh, uh, we'll discuss that a little bit more in the next session, but uh, but uh, yeah, it'll show you the difference between what's subscribed by your library or what's held by the consortia. Okay, so things that aren't owned and subscribed to by the library, well, I not, guess I'm wondering what's that? Well, you know, in this case, of course, they won't appear when you select what's just owned by your library. But I mean, if somebody hasn't selected that. Yeah, it won't be discoverable. Book, what, then they're just going to say, well, here's the problem. Um, after we, you know, we're still working through the consortia, um, okay. but I, I think that there should be another status option directly below this to allow you to select, you know, your policy holdings or, or things that are shared shared uh, through the consortia. So there should be another link here that will allow you to select that as well. Are you talking about our DBA that we share with policy? Is, Is that, that what? It, uh, do we have a DBA with them, I believe? Yeah. Right? Or I just saw you. I'm not sure. I just saw that you were on that consortium list. And you know, we're having to treat you, you know, as a member of that consortium to make sure that you know the holdings are moved over right. correctly. And so, are we able to say the kid who's in Kelsey has bought a title, not a DBA, they just bought a nano materials title that's in eBrary? I don't think you'll be able to see that. Right. So, because it's the licensing, right? So, if someone has that unclicked or has policy clicked and sees a book that Pitt has as an ebook. I mean, they're not never going to be able to look at it. We can't ILL those ebooks, right? We're not resource sharing ebooks. Is that right? Well, yeah, not licensing. Well, not right. Um, so I guess what Beth is asking, what good does that are do to our patrons to see books that we do not own or subscribe to, and even healthy books because of their ebooks we can't. Yeah, I guess my preference would be, however, yes, I mean, my preference with ebook packages like this would be to just get the person in and show them what they have access to right mm -hmm. now. Because honestly, if they need something that's not there, I think then they need to be using our ILL service. Yes. And, that, and, and not DDA. And not, probably not in this world. <laughs> yeah. So can that be a default? Yeah, can we talk Yeah, actually, this will default to just what you own, that, that academic okay. complete collection. So okay. there's, you know. <laughs> that's so why I, they don't have to click it. It's just automatic. Yes. So, so then, you know, you'll automatically default to all of your 183,000 titles, like I said, that's growing. So, so it's designed so, you know, users won't get any turnaways. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, the book results, and we can even look for, for chapter results. So with my, my same query on nanomaterials, I have the 20 uh, most relevant chapters um, at the top of this list. But I'm going to step back to book results and go in and open up a title. Notice your abilities to add more than 10 results to a page or to, to sort not only by relevance, but by publication date, title, contributors, and we would be told to look at that like authors, you know, and, uh, and publishers. Um, you see, this, there's my, I thought it was a star, but whatever that symbol is, showing that these items are available, available upon request. And I am going out to the, to the, um, the reader now, or to the details page. So this looks just like the page we looked at when we linked from from uh, eBook Central, so there should be not much of a learning curve for your for your patrons here. I can choose to read online, and this is the the old eBrary reader. As I said, we found this to be the better reader. So now I can go back to the book details. Uh, I can go to the table of contents here, of course. It's my introduction. I can also, you know, look at any annotations that may have been made to this book. And this is uh, important or uh, it would make more sense when you have saved something to a bookshelf and, you know, done some uh, some annotations or added some annotations. So uh, the user can 
you know, always go to their bookshelf login and get directly back to this title, this specific page where the annotation is. There's some kind of uh, highlight to show where they left off. Yeah. They only see their own annotations. Correct. Correct. Okay. So uh, across the top of the page are our, our, our tools, a full download. And again, you define how long you want those downloads to be in Live Central. We can download just a chapter if we choose to, and also we can copy any text. So just highlight and copy your, your text there. And also when highlighting is when these, these annotation tools come up, allowing you to, to uh, highlight in three different colors there. And you can even take page level notes. So, and the notes, uh, there's no limit. You can you can write pages and pages of notes if you want to. And of course, you save that, and it all appears again when you access the book. It'll show you from the table of contents listings that there are notes or annotations or a bookmark on on a particular page. You click on that page and you're right back to where you started. So all of that we feel is time saving for for users. Uh, you don't have to come and search again for the book and you know narrow your results list and, and, and walk through the process that I'm going through now, but by using the bookshelf, it's a lot easier. Yes, ma'am. So uh, can you tell me how, uh, how, I guess the word stable, the collection is? Um, there's some other ebook packages, collections, um, they just kind of based on publisher agreements, titles come and go. Um, how likely is it that titles from this particular collection will be gone next year? I mean, there is always a likelihood that, you know, the publishers will pull some titles, uh, but we're also adding new titles on right. a regular basis. So, you know, it all depends on the, you know, the publisher agreement. And so, it, so that is, it is something a possibility. that happens. With this yes, yes. Well, that, yeah, I mean, it's, I just, you need, people need to be aware of that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. You know, if we, if, because I've used, sometimes used them on, you know, linked to ebooks on uh, one of our LibGuides, and then come back to the class the next and year. And it's not and there. Link doesn't work. So. <laughs> I know, that's, that's yeah. no fun. That's okay. no fun. Thank you. Sure. Of course, uh, other features, we can print the content and remember the, the one third rule. Um, uh, add to a bookshelf, so I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm logged into my bookshelf, but uh, it allows me to add to my bookshelf. And this is where you would share the link. So this is great for any you know, professor who wants to share you know, a chapter with the class or, or uh, just a librarian who wants to share with, with a patron um, that's sharing. And also, your citation for this book, there's your, your highlight feature again, and the feature to add notes again, along with bookmarking. And you notice how this turned to a, a, a blue bookmark, and it would note that in the table of contents that I bookmarked page one of 236. Here's my navigation tools, allow me to advance to the next page, and I can zoom in, zoom out, and fit it to the width of the page. Let's see what else. Um, I, have, I have another question. Sure, no problem. Uh, very minor question. Um, in the, that reader interface, the page, the page navigation up at the top, um, does it match always the page number in the book? For instance, if there's a forward with Lowercase yeah. Roman numerals. Actually, we addressed that issue just the other day, and we know that there have been some some discrepancies, but it seems to match up completely now. So it'll even show like you're on page I I I. Uh huh. So you yeah. can review. So it. yeah, yeah. Okay. Actually, good timing. We did discuss this recently. Yeah, because yeah. I think EBL they were one that you wanted page ten and you put page ten and it went to page. 30. Yeah, uh, EBL was okay. the one. Okay. Great, great. It's just you just need to know what you're. <laughs> but yeah, they do match up uh, uh, a lot better now. <laughs> and by going to the search tab, uh, we this is where you'll see you know um, um, search tips. Notice from the from the, the the basic landing page, you can begin to search, and you don't have any search tips there. But if you click on search 
across the, the, the toolbar there. That's where you'll see tips for keyword searching, exact word, Boolean searches, and how to use the filters. Okay, so, uh, and that again is all based on, you know, the analysis that we've done. We find that most people, will, they don't look at, at search tips first. They're gonna try it and see what they get. And then when they don't find the results that they want, then they'll begin to look at search tips and strategies. Okay, but there we find our search tips. And as I said, I didn't, I did, okay, uh, there's the bookshelf. So the bookshelf will come with these folders, downloads and loans. So anything that a patron has downloaded, they can go to this section and it will tell them how much longer they have. Okay, you, you downloaded this book, you have 14 days or you have 10 days remaining. So it's kind of a ticker to show when it's gonna, um, hey, that timed out on me, but uh, it will show you in your bookshelf what's been downloaded what's been recently viewed and you can quickly get to items that you've annotated and everything that you've saved to your to your bookshelf the research folder is standard to everyone's account so everyone will get that research folder but you can add as many new folders as you like and begin to hold your your items in specific folders Okay. And really, that's the functionality of, of the new product. Now, these are global level, na global level navigation tools, so I can share the link to this entire results list from, from this place, or I can email this entire folder. I can even uh, export or cite this entire folder and export that. But once again, you see I'm timing out there. I apologize for that. But um, and then at the local level, so these are going to be navigation tools for just this particular item. So global navigation at the top, and then we can read online, we go to the table of contents for this book. So we're back at that table of contents. And this is new as well, a description of the book. And these are being provided by the publisher, of course. So we, we have detailed um, descriptions of the books now in this new platform. I have a question about the download. Um, is it still Adobe Digital Editions? Yes. And that, that takes care of the, the limits and the. Correct, correct. And there's another little piece, uh, I forget what it's called, where you have to do that other little download in case you want to switch devices if you start on your laptop and you want to. The code is a, a Adobe code. But as your students, begin a download, they'll be prompted to go through that process. Okay, it'll ask what type of device, is it an Android, iOS device? And uh, uh, you begin the download process. And, you know, Adobe Digital Edition is free, takes less than a minute to download. And if you are planning to, to read on another device, and you can share on up to six devices, you need that code to plug in to get to that content from Adobe. Okay. Uh, so, I think that's about all. Uh, so your, your your navigation tools and there's uh, the ability to, to export any notes from this item, to share the link to this book. Uh, we can copy that into our research folder. So there's your ability to just place it into that research folder or whatever folder you created. And all of these you're seeing next to the titles of the next to the um, title of the, of the item. And then we can even remove this from the bookshelf from additional features here. This is just your personal profile. And lastly, I wanna to go to my library guides for these products. Okay, so please take down our URL for our live guides, proquest.liveguides.com. I have a live guide for the ProQuest platform and for our books and ebooks. And of course, we, just like you all, we keep these as up to date as possible. We, any new feature, any changes, we go in immediately and try to update these live guides. 
Uh, but working with the Pro Bus platform, and you see, you play around with it a little while, you become pretty proficient. We think it's pretty intuitive now, uh, yet strong, but it gives you all of the, you know, a page to link to all of the 38 databases in ProQuest Central. Uh, there's more information about the database. You can link out to live webinars or register for a webinar. And I'll, I'll be honest, our webinars have probably decreased in numbers because we are moving more to self-serve training, like I said, videos and the live guides and uh, you know, to allow you to do it at your leisure. We know how busy you are and how hard it is to carve out an hour in the middle of the day. So more self-serve training opportunities. But here is a video for the basic platform. And I think that's all that's on that page. Here's some tips for searching. You want a basic advanced command line search. We browse through some publications and we browse through the, the subject list as well. So tips for, for all of those um search strategies and how to interpret the results all this is included in our live guide our searchable fields so uh all of these that you might want to use to construct command line searches are are in an extensive list here and you also find some information on this page about our thesaurus uh the various thesaurus that are used for, for all of these databases there are you know different thesaurus for thesauri for uh, different databases, so they kind of clutter together, and, but you can get to that information here. So again, more on the results, document views, so PDF, uh, full text, and A and I, and we even give you some sample searches and more information on on the importance of creating a my research account and uh, saving your information to quickly access it at a later time. Okay. Hopefully that gives you a little better feel for what you have, the, the various databases, how to customize it for yourself and for your patrons. And of course, your support materials here and how to contact us if you have specific questions. And you know, I, again, I can be your point of contact for any of the types of questions that you've had today regarding the platform, functionality, and the functionality of the ebooks. If I don't know the answer, at least I can get to the person who can help me. But uh, thank you for being so attentive and uh, for your, your great questions. But we'll continue here. Are there any other questions, anything else that I might address? I want to go back to the mediated thing um, for a little bit. What percentage of publishers do you think that is? I mean, or what, you know, do you get a sense of what percentage is? of the total package that we would have to mediate? Honestly, I don't know. Uh, that's something I, I can I can certainly ask. But, I think know, that's one of the frustrations yeah, when we get that high and it stopped. I think it's probably close to 600 publishers now. I mean, last count was well over 500, but uh, you know, certainly I can I can. Do you think the numbers growing or shrinking? I think it's growing. But she means that you know, publishers that don't allow the short term loans. Oh, oh, they don't. Okay, they don't. That. Um, I, I, I don't I know don't. if you guys are working on them, trying to say, hey, libraries yeah. do not Actually, want um, media. Uh, what's your, your, your special ebook book guy? Uh, Joseph? Joseph, yeah. He, he can probably answer that a little better than I can. Not the techno, not the, but right. the ebook book specialist. But I think that's the thing. The patrons are going along looking at it and then they get that thing <laughs> that's not and of course that email comes to me but if yeah. it's on a friday night <laughs> they're looking at it i'm not seeing it till monday and yeah. by then they're like well okay so <laughs> you need to know more about mediated content okay NDA. NDA. right yeah the mediated uh, is on the dda is there a way we can do the dda only mediated for those publishers that don't allow short-term loans, but not mediated for everything else. Reducing the That's what we have right now. We only have it mediated on the publishers that don't allow. There's, there's so many more of them. Things. That's what I told you. It was the 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 Yeah, and that's why we have a workflow consultant to call to help you set up the new DDA. Um, um, you know, they'll put in your, your preferred uh, provider or 
uh, you said YBP, uh, and YBP also, so, you know, they'll help you set up all those parameters and, and, and. It would be interesting to know how many publishers don't allow short-term loans and the number of titles in package from those. Publishers. And again, that workflow consultant, uh, who's, who's, who would do the DDA uh, setup? Uh, is that person here? <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, the workflow consultant would have more information on, on, on that than I might. Uh, you know, they, that's their specialty, so they'll help you set up. It would be kind of interesting to, to know if you could have a way to block those out. Um, yeah. See what, the, see what the subject coverage is and what publishers they are, because maybe they're not worth the aggravation to to our users. Our users just don't want for it. Well, yeah, they're just not going to. So let's, you know, don't don't dangle. Yeah. <laughs> don't tease the kitty. <laughs> yes, yeah, of course. I have a question about the dissertations. Are they full text or just abstracts? And they are full text. Well, from, yeah, from what? And I think in most graduate programs, uh, there's something, some way that we, we introduce it to you, you know, to automatically get these included in the uh, ProQuest database. So, again, my, my colleague Sarah Palmer kind of handles information on dissertation and the training for that procedure. So, if you have more questions, you can just reach out to her at sarah.palmer at ProQuest.com. The other thing I wrote down to ask you is, can we change the time of our trigger? Does it always have to be five minutes? You mean for the preview of the, the item? Yeah. I don't think so. I, that's all I've heard is that five minutes. Okay. Five I didn't know if we could say, let's go to 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think it is just five minutes. Yeah, when Mary Fran comes to campus on the 31st, I wrote that down to ask for Yeah, Pat Adams used to be our rep, now it's Mary Fran. Don't ask me that. I can't remember. All right, we're right on time. If there are no other questions, again, thank you. Thank you for coming in today, and I hope you learned something new. Okay. Thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs>